think we're going to try and do like yoga. Like I want to do yoga with my wife. She and I haven't done yoga together in over a year. So the experience of doing yoga together has been really foundational for us because, you know, you have the, all of the benefits of the yoga practice of like slowing down, stretching, finding mobility, finding breath work. If it's a vigorous practice, getting like the muscular and cardiovascular, um, aspects of that, which is all just good for you. Um, all of the health benefits of it and the mental benefits, but then also doing it with your partner is really nice because you're setting that time aside where you're doing something for yourself that's entirely for yourself, but it's with someone that you care about. So coming out of a yoga class, we would always like, you know, go get tea or coffee or like just go sit and read somewhere. And you know, that's something that goes away when you are a parent. So I'm grateful that we have this time that's sort of put aside for us to do that. Yeah. Good day, and welcome to episode 63 of the Aaron Wayne Podcast. Mm. Hit him with the beat. You know, I recorded three days ago, started recording a podcast, and it totally flopped. In fact, I said multiple times in the middle of it, I probably should stop doing this uh, and just go to sleep. But uh, I'm actually doing an afternoon podcast today. Big difference. So it's summertime. So uh, my wife wanted to go get some plants uh, for the garden. And I said, why don't you guys, why don't you, why don't you go enjoy that for yourself? You know, a tone of that seems wrong. I shaved my head and I cut a mustache. And my wife, as soon as I came out of the bathroom, looked at me and said, oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. Which isn't what you want to hear when you get a haircut, but then she explained herself. She said she 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 goes you you just don't look like a nice person without your beard. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with that, um, but I'm rocking it. Figured I'd do something different. School's over. School's out for the summer, and um, yeah, big things popping off in my life, uh, which I'll talk about at a later date. But something I do want to talk about is I sold my van. So summertime is usually when my van, uh, my wife and I cruise in our van. We go cross country. We go wherever wherever the road may take us. But, you know, with a kid, we got an eight-month-old, and, you know, we don't really have a place to put her in the van. So we uh, got rid of it and, um, you know, went to uh, a nice – person that uh is studying education in chicago so um and they wanted to like live in the van as a doctoral student doctoral i don't know i have a bachelor's degree so um i'm, I'm grateful that it went to somebody that was actually going to dig it and use it actually in fact i got a call uh coming up because there's something wrong with the water because I don't know how to build vans I just happen to have had the unbridled ego to 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 make one but you know it was uh it's the end of an era it was sad it was cleaning out the van I sat in the van and just like with all the doors open and kind of outside in the backyard so it looked like I was in a natural setting and uh was reminiscent of you know, the trips that we've done and the memories we've had. And I, when we started doing the van thing, I was like, well, I want to do this for us. I want to do this like as a thing uh, for us to enjoy life. But then that's when I started getting into the idea of like media and building things for the internet. And so I have all of these recordings because we attempted to like vlog a couple of our trips, but then like, it just doesn't play to our skill set. Um, Katie and I are both really comfortable on camera but the creating a narrative out of the story like it just doesn't or out of like your life it just doesn't like land it doesn't play out for us so you know I got all these like really half-baked recordings of us doing van stuff but uh don't I don't know maybe I'll cut some of that stuff in maybe I won't but I think I on this YouTube channel I might have some stuff 
buried way down deep. If you look like four years ago, you might be able to find some of these stupid videos that we made. Um, I think I posted a video of us like before we even had the van. We were on a hike and I was trying to convince Katie to get a van. You know, shouts out to my lady because, you know, I think that any good partnership, be it a romantic partnership or, you know, business relationship or anything, like you really need to have complementary skill sets. And, you know, I'm a bit of a dreamer and builder, and Katie's a bit more of uh, like clear expectations and, and follow a path kind of gal. So we blend together really well in that I come up with crazy ideas like let's build a van and live in it for a period of time. And she's like, no, no, no. Until eventually she's like, ah, I kind of see what he's saying. So, you know, we uh, and we broke even on the on the sale which is nice because you know you don't buy a car and then sell it five years later after putting almost 60,000 miles on it for the price that you bought it at so I'm I'm really grateful for that and I have this like cashier's check that I got to take to the bank because um I don't think that you can like get a second one so it's just like this it's like having a we three kings be stealing the gold. If you ever seen that movie Three Kings, it's like having a, a like a gold brick, and you're like, oh my god, what do I do with this? Um, it's not that much money, but it's you know more money than I've gotten. Uh, straight cash, baby. Ha <laughs> stacking them bills. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just chilling. Hopefully you guys are doing well. I'm trying to get back into the mode of podcasting now that we have a little bit more time. But then, you know, with the baby, it's like you just can't find the time because when you when I'm doing things like this that don't have a very direct output other than uh, I'm just kind of building and creating, if it doesn't have a sort of real tangible thing to translate to my lady, like, hey, look, this is, you know, I taught this many yoga classes and this is how much money I made. Um, if it doesn't have that sort of feature to it, then it's like, why are you in the basement talking to yourself? Cause that's effectively what I'm doing. I'm talking to you guys, right? And things keep growing, which is awesome. But you know, and the, the growth of my podcast this year, um, YouTube has gotten bigger. The, uh, RSS feed, um, so like the audio podcast, it's actually gotten smaller. Um, I don't know why that is. I think it's probably because of consistency. I just haven't been doing it consistently. So, um, I can't find like a mode of doing it because I think it's probably because I'm too lazy. <laughs> you know, I mean, I do a lot of things. I, I, I'm a hard worker, but come nine o'clock, which is like really the time that I should be utilizing to do the podcast. I just uh, would rather um, take a hot bath and watch YouTube. These are my confessions. Yeah. I just, uh, maybe if I start doing hot yoga, I won't like want to do, I mean, I do it like a hot bath. Like a hot tub goes to 104. I make my bathtub like 110, 112. Um, and get close to passing out almost every time, I think. Um, most times. But there's a lot of research. You know, look at the – are you guys going to look at the research? You're not going to look at the research because I have. There's a lot of research on uh, heat exposure. Uh, it creates something, a little something called heat shock proteins, which is good for you um, in a lot of different ways. So, you know, that's that. That's what I got going on with, the, with that stuff. I didn't prepare any notes today. Can you tell? I think one note that I had was sold the van. Yeah. End of school year was cool. We did field day. Um, I did two and a half hours of ultimate frisbee, and we and it, that seems like a lot because it was a lot. I looked at my Garmin and I had run nearly a half marathon, but it's like jog, walk, sprint, jog, walk, sprint. Like, you know. So what I'm getting at is your boy's an elite athlete, elite as hell. And then the next day I was like limping. And then the day after that, I felt great, man. Felt really good. I miss my fitness, you know. I need to stick with the fitness, keep the fitness going, stay dialed in on that stuff. The daycare that we send our daughter to is, um, they 
have us on a part-time schedule because if we don't maintain membership um then they may end up like not having a spot for us in the fall uh when school starts back up so she goes on tuesdays and wednesdays today's a sunday and um so the experience of doing yoga together has been really foundational for us because you know you have the all of the benefits of the yoga practice of like slowing down stretching finding mobility finding breath work if it's a vigorous practice getting like the muscular and cardiovascular um aspects of that which is all just good for you um all of the health benefits of it and the mental benefits but then also doing it with your partner is really nice because you're setting that time aside where you're doing something for yourself that's entirely for yourself but it's with someone that you care about so coming out of a yoga class we would always like you know go get tea or coffee or like just go sit and read somewhere and you know that's something that goes away when you are a parent so i'm grateful that we have this time that's sort of put aside for us to do that so that we can go do some yoga and i miss the hot yoga man i'm telling you like i love yoga i always have i always have I've, i've always said that you know um but hot yoga is an addiction you know i would do before i became a yoga teacher i had been practicing yoga for a while and then i came down here to where i live and um my friend nicole owns uh in balance yoga studio um she wasn't a friend at the time she was just a yoga studio owner but she and i lead the teacher trainings together in fact there's an interview that i did with her i think called nicole jumps back in when we uh were sort of promoting the yoga teacher training program after uh covid when things like started to become normal again so you know i met her and uh started doing hot yoga at her place and i had never done hot yoga before i don't remember my first hot yoga class but i wish that i did because it was probably like a like a holy shit kind of situation because shortly thereafter i was doing yoga i was doing hot yoga like twice a day three to five days a week I was going every day, but you know, three to five days a week, I was doing it twice and I was so fit. It was insane. Um, the like way that my spot, but again, I don't know, like I'm 34 now, so I don't feel old. And if you, you know, if you're, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Spotify, go over to YouTube. Actually, I'm going to try to upload this on Spotify. I got a notification that I can do videos on Spotify now. So this podcast will probably be the first one that I published to Spotify. Uh, and Twitter does it too. Now I can take like two hours of audio or video and put it on YouTube. So I'll probably upload it to both places. But the point that I was making was what was the point? I have no idea what the hell I was talking about. Hot yoga. I was obsessed with it. Oh yeah. I'm 34. So like if you, if you see me in video, I look like a, a spry, youthful, handsome young man but my body feels like I'm in my fifties or sixties. Like I wake up every morning, I got to roll my ankles and my wrists. Sometimes my wrist pops while I'm sleeping as if I had just been doing deadlifts. It's like, bro, you're just laying there. Why are your wrist popping? You know, and I'm walking around during Shavasana when I'm teaching a yoga class and it sounds like I'm walking on top of eggshells. It sounds like, you know, I got popcorn feet. Every time I walk, it's like click, 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 pop, pop, pop. And there's like sizzles. I don't know why that's sizzling. Because, you know, it shouldn't be. But you ever seen uh, Tony Robbins in the coal walk? People walk over hot coals. That's a trick. It's a psychological trick. Seems like it's a bigger deal than it is, you know. There's a uh, magician that I follow named Darren Brown. I think he has a special coming out uh, on Netflix sometime soon. But just YouTube Darren Brown. Dude is a total gangster. But he does this trick where he walks on glass, um, and it is just that. It's a trick. If you had enough glass and you piled it up and you walked over it, the displacement of your weight, wouldn't it wouldn't cut you. You know, Not a big deal. It's just science. It shows people's lack of science education. You know, you could, you could pull that sort of thing off, and it wasn't, like, embarrassing. In, you know, in, in 1874, speaking of which, I'm reading this book on the Vanderbilts right now super interesting family but in 1874 maybe i'll come back to that in 18 in 18 you know early 19th century what 19 
I always have to do this. In the 19th century, yes, in the 1800s, that's what 19th century is. In the 19th century, if someone came to your town and was like, I'm going to walk on glass. Ho, 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 I'm a magic man. And they do like a whole like sh- like build up the, you know, the magic quality of it with all the, you know, the preface and, and really like, hey, guys, don't do this at home kind of thing. You could trick those people because they're fuck they're they're basically, you know, they're entirely uneducated people in the 19th century. You had a handful of cats that were they didn't even wash their hands until the 20th century. Meaning doctors. I read uh, the Great Influenza, which is about the uh, 1918. I don't know. It's during World War One. World War One is what sort of basically caused it because of the soldiers in tight barracks. Um, and they weren't washing their hands before then, uh, doctors, it, like the germ theory of disease came to be, uh, shortly after the civil war, American civil war, I believe. So 1870s, but it was sort of a fringe belief. In fact, the guy who came up with the germ theory of disease, I read this in Peter Atia's book called draw, uh, not drive. That's his podcast, uh, outlive. Um, the guy who came up with the germ theory of disease was completely ostracized from the medical community, ended up dying in, uh, in an insane asylum, what they called him at the time. So this guy's like just going batty because nobody believed him. He's like, just wash your hands. You're you're killing me. And he's just like losing his mind. (laughs) And everybody's like, this guy's stupid. (laughs) Wash my hands. Why don't you come over here and wash them for me, fella? And he's just like, you know, in a padded room, you know. And the orderlies are coming in. Their fingers are dirty. You know they are. They probably make them, they probably made their hands extra dirty to, like, prove a point, you know. I, I don't remember the guy's name, but, you know, that's what happens. That's what happens to the real innovators. The world just doesn't get it. And then you die alone in an insane asylum with orderlies that have, you know, slimy hands babies have slimy hands i'll tell you that here and now my baby walks around and it's like she's my baby walks around like you know she just found a tub of butter and like somehow like stuck her hands into the not even like real butter but like land of lakes hydrogenated oil butter and she's just like always like chewing on her hands which they tell me is a sign that she's teething but I don't believe most of the shit that people tell me about kids because I, I just, how do I say this kindly? You know, my BMI is borderline overweight, my body mass index. So it's like weight divided by height or the inverse of that. I don't recall, but it gives you a number, right? Uh, my BMI is like 25. I think the line for being overweight is like BMI of 26 or whatever. And so what that tells you is that's an ineffective metric. Um, when you gauge your n- blood markers and all these different things, like if you get any tests done, and blood pressure, all this stuff, it's like you're being measured against a populace of people that is profoundly unwell. Um, you know, one third of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic, 70, 67, 70%, somewhere in the 60 to 70% of range of Americans are either overweight or obese. And yes, there's a huge fat positivity movement out there, but um, you know the data, and there as there should be, you should not judge people uh, because of the way they look. <laughs> Seems obvious, right? Um, you should not judge people based on how they look, and that's an easy thing to say when it comes to um, you know culture, ethnicity, race. But it's for some reason like people are very ready to judge people because of the way that their physical body regardless independent of those things how their physical body manifests in the world and there is a bit to that right if you have a fit body it indicates that you've been dedicated to being fit and so that but whatever you know we live in a culture that is really not helping the default setting of people so nonetheless why did i bring that up um fat positivity See, this is why I need a podcast host, co-host, to just, like, help track me back to what I was talking about. Um, oh, yeah, so if you're measuring, this is back to, I'm now I'm going to tie it together. 
if you're measuring yourself against the norm of society, uh, Krishnamurti, who is a yoga teacher, he said it is not a sign of wellness to be well adjusted in a profoundly sick society. And so when you look at those metrics when it comes to health, you know, X amount of people have X disorder or, you know, Y amount of people are experiencing, you know, this um, body composition, whatever it is, then you can't really measure, it, it skews the data set. And when I get advice from parents, I know good parents, but I also am a public school teacher and I'm not, how do I say this without making it say, I'm trying to say this in a way that's actually nice. I, I see a lot of, of parenting that embodies principles that I don't necessarily agree with. Like here, here's a real specific example. I was, Katie and I went out for Mother's Day and we went to the art museum. We met another young couple, chatted with them, you know, babies are waving at each other, googing and gogging and all that stuff. And uh, I was like, okay, this seems, you know, more akin to how we go about it. And maybe it's just an age thing, right? And that our, our kids are the, roughly the same age. And then we go to a brewery and, you know, there's kids running around and there's a little girl dancing and the parents are like, or I think parents, but then also a grandpa and stuff. They were like, be really sweet and, um, and letting the kid kind of explore and like kind of push her boundaries and kind of go into, uh, away from the table, but like still within eye shot. And so I was like, yeah, that's really cool. And all of this, like when I see parenting, I'm very like aware of like I would do it that way I wouldn't do it that way like it's real easy when you're at 7-eleven and you see somebody yelling at their kid it's like you got to work on yourself because you can't let this whatever it is you're dealing with you can't let that be um you know transplanted into your child um and that's the that's the stuff that's easy to see but the thing that I think is more insidious is the things that you know the elders of our world say to young parents I say young parent, I'm 34. Most people have kids 10 years before I do. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, so one of the things that somebody said at this brewery was, uh, oh, I love this age, you know? And I was like, yeah, she's starting to talk. She's saying dad, dad, and like kind of responding to us a little bit and stuff. And they're like, oh, wait until she starts talking. Like with a tone of, with a tone that basically says, when your child begins to talk, all you'll want them to do is shut up. And I think that's so, like, it's not good for people to say that to parents. Like, that may be true. Likely, there will be a point where my daughter, uh, and God willing, we have more kids. But if it's just Eleanor, um, I don't know if I've said her name publicly. Have I? Mm. Mm. That's not her name. It's a fake name. Um, she may get to a point where it's like, okay, I get it. Like, stop talking (laughs) like it's unrealistic you know I mean my wife feels that about me I feel that about my wife my parents feel that about me I feel that about them from time to time it's like okay yeah just can you can I be left alone for a while but I just don't think it's good to say to young parents because let them figure that out if that is the case um instead of sort of framing uh it's it they do it with uh, uh when you have a newborn too it's uh this is what people say they say they always ask if you're sleeping. They always ask you, are you sleeping? Are you getting any sleep? I still get that. And my daughter is about to be eight months. And uh, the answer is always like, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. But it's almost like this thing about our culture that I think is probably probably scares a lot of people off of having kids. Like, the kid's not going to shut up. You're never going to have time to yourself. Uh, you're not going to sleep anymore, and all of your meals are going to be, you know, half-eaten chicken nuggets that they squoze through their fingers as you're standing at a kitchen counter, uh, just praying that the baby will stop crying. It's like that is not my experience as a parent. <laughs> that has not been my experience. You know, my wife has definitely taken more of the responsibility um, because she has a natural aptitude for those things. And you know, we actually had uh, argument ish disagreement the other day where, you know, I came to grips with like, you know, I'm allowing her to do more because she naturally has the inclination to do more. But 
that that unconscious behavior on both of our parts is overextending her slightly. So she's naturally going to like, oh, no, I'll go, I'll go get her. Or like, I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold her while I do things. Um, and I'm more naturally like independent and like, okay, yeah. Just, so our unconscious ba- patterns of behavior have led to a situation where she's holding much more of the burden. Um, and I, you know, get to be fun dad which has been a nice arrangement for me, but it's just not fair, right? And it wasn't malicious or um, me like, you do this, I'm going to go do something else. It was just her habits and my habits led to a situation that neither of us were aware of until it got to a point where I was like, okay, daddy's got to do a bit more. But my, you know, I've really enjoyed having a child, especially with my wife. I really like having a baby with my wife. I think that's a huge factor in many people's uh, relationships that they don't consider, which is, do I want to have kids? Yes, no. Decision tree branches there. If you're on the yes side of that, then it's like, is this person the right person for me to have kids with? Um, And I am grateful that I'm not in a situation where I love somebody that um, doesn't share my values uh, as a parent because that would be like – pretty terrible we got it we did it guys we got one in we're gonna call this one 25 minutes because as i'm looking at this camera because i'm an unprofessional podcaster the battery's gonna die so we gotta wrap this one up that was fun got it in i feel a bit more nimble a bit looser i got my setup dialed in see this is another thing I often will make things perfect to prevent me from working. So procrastination can sometimes manifest in tinkering and perfecting. And now I'm just set up, ready to go. No excuses. I'm going to get this done. So I hope you guys have a good one. See you on the next one. Go to iTunes and Spotify and rate the thing it's got five stars but it doesn't have a lot of them you know what i mean so go rate review subscribe hit the youtube build my subs please uh i'm trying to build the youtube the youtube has grown uh at a consistent percentage but the numbers are still real low gotta keep growing see you guys on the next one boom there it is if you're still watching, make sure you hit like and subscribe. It's the easiest way that you can contribute. It costs you nothing, and it helps me out a lot with the algorithm. So if you were into this, uh, let me know. And uh, see you on the next clip, guys. For full episodes, you can get them on Spotify and iTunes, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel. I post them on Sundays and Wednesdays every week. All right, guys. Peace.